came which was actually something that happened at our request yes there are mysteries so deep crimes so puzzling that no human can solve them these are the cases that can only be closed by one of the most remarkable weapons available to modern law enforcement the dog nose you could put a baby's teardrop on a football field and the dog could find it in five minutes Able to smell some odors with 10,000 times more sensitivity than people, dogs have truly superhuman crime-solving powers. Without these four-legged detectives, thousands of criminals would elude capture. But for bad guys, there's no hiding from a good nose. was actually something that happened at our request. I walk into a bakery, I smell a cake or pastries. When a dog walks into a bakery, he sorts those odors and he smells eggs, flour, sugar, and different ingredients that might go into what I smell. So why are dog noses so far superior to our merely human ones? Obviously, our puny noses are built very differently than theirs. And as far as smelling goes, size does matter. The longer canine snout forms a moist, warm chamber that more efficiently dissolves scent particles, allowing the dog's brain to better identify individual smells. This is one of the many reasons they don't use pugs for tracking criminals. And while we only have one muscle group in our noses, they have three, allowing the snout to actually change shape while inhaling and exhaling, making the dog nose a two-lane highway, 
where scents coming in don't mix with the breath going out. The scent remains undiluted as it's drawn right to the dog's scent receptors. Small wonder they have a better nose for crime than we do. The scent of murder isn't easy to hide from a dog. So how can a murderer fool a canine detective? Most can't. detective. Most can't. But one man in Northern California dug deep to try. The sleepy coastal town of Half Moon Bay, California, had one of its leading citizens, a man named Henry Olson, vanish. Neighbors first became alarmed when they noticed Henry's beloved Doberman was being neglected. Henry never left his dog unattended. They also observed a local contractor, making himself very much at home in Henry's home. Ron Middleton said Mr. Olson was simply out of town and had asked him to look after things. The still suspicious neighbors called the police. Ron's explanation was that he and Henry had become very close. They had a lot in common and uh, Mr. Olson had just had a recent breakup with someone that he'd been with and was probably going to marry, and he needed to just get away. He was having emotional problems and was very traumatized and just felt the need to get away and supposedly went back to visit his family in Minnesota and left his house, his business, his life in Ron's care. As the investigation progressed, the police discovered that Ron had been using Henry's credit cards and cars. And none of Henry's family in Minnesota had heard from him. Detective Bear drove to Ron's house. There, in his driveway, she saw something that confirmed her worst suspicions. As soon as I saw the backhoe, my heart just dropped down to my feet. You knew that Henry was dead. There's just no two ways about it. When I walked over to the side, I saw a freshly excavated large area of property, and I, I knew, I knew that Mr. Olson was dead and lying in the ground behind that house as soon as I saw that. Although Detective Bear was certain that Henry's body was somewhere on Ron's property, there were 10 acres to search, and quite a bit of soil had been freshly turned. Dogs were the only hope. 
was time to call in the Doberman Gang, a team of three handlers and their search dogs. Trained as cadaver dogs, these Dobermans will alert on bones, decomposing human flesh, or even teeth. But the odds of finding anything in such an enormous search area are low. The handlers split up. The first team stayed near the house. The second went to explore the fields. And the third searched along a drainage area. In a matter of minutes, Spice led Shirley Hammond to a freshly built earthen dam. The first thing I noticed is that she went up to the top of the dam and stood there just, you know, with her nose way up in sniffing the trees. The canopy is like a sponge. It traps the, the, all the scent that's rising from the earth breathing and, and scent coming up and then it just hangs up there. She kept repeating this behavior and so I called um, Eva on the, on the radio and asked Eva to come down and look at what was going on. When Shirley called, I came to the dam area and my dog was circling around and doing basically the same behavior that Spice was doing. Very interested, very focused, with her nose down, with her nose up, just checking the, the whole area. And I think at this point, we decided that we need Adela. All three of our dogs did the exact thing. I mean, within like a three-foot circle, they all said, yes, right here, right here. All three of them were so precise in it. So it was very, we all felt very reassured because our dogs, three dogs saying, it's here. The police brought in their backhoe and started digging where the dogs told them to. The technique we like to do, they dig a layer off, we take the dogs back, and the dogs give us direction, you know, to the right, to the left. The dig went on for hours. Then at five feet down, something finally happened. The bobcat driver stops the vehicle. He jumps out and he says, something really smells bad. And of course, everybody is like, huddling around, what is it, what is it? So they go and investigate, and there's piles and piles, bags and bags of meat, big roasts and hunks of meat, and it smelled bad. And the flies instantly hit it. We removed the meat, we showed the dogs the meat, and they went, yeah, and then they went right back to work. And they went back right on that dam and started to, you know, put the noses down and, and saying, dig deeper. We train them off garbage and animal remains. It's a very important part of our training. We go around collecting old bones from animals, um, household garbage, roadkill, road kill, cat food, you name it. And we put it out in our search area and the dogs learn right away there is no reward for telling us about it. So the dig continued. Six feet down. Seven. Eight. When we got to about nine feet under, the dogs began to go crazy. They'd found something. And at that point, they started doing careful digging with the shovels and got down to a rolled up carpeting. Buried where no one but a dog could have known was Henry Olson. When the crime scene people measured it, when they said 10 feet, it was a, boy, I don't know anybody who's found a body that deep. And we thought, you know, there's no reason in the world why this investigation would have looked at this dam, let alone taken all day long to tear apart the dam. So I think this to us was like, 
Yes, our value of our dogs really shown today because this was a dog find. Ron Middleton was convicted of first degree murder and sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. Without the contributions of five different dogs, he might have gotten away with murder. Without finding Mr. Olson's body, we would have never been able to convict Middleton of the murder. This case would not have been solved without the dogs. Not with the body 10 feet underground on 10 acres of land. Never. Uncovering a body buried so deep in the earth was an unprecedented accomplishment for these dogs and handlers. Thank you.